This first lesson's just a quick intro. So over the next minute or so, we're gonna review three important things. First, we're gonna touch on what a cap table specifically keeps track of. Second, we'll talk about when you should create your company's cap table. And finally, we'll talk about how to get your cap table set up. You ready? Let's dive in. So what does a cap table keep track of? In short order, let's run through the main items. First, the cap table tracks exactly what kind of ownership everyone has. Remember, there's more than one type of equity that you can give someone. For example, some of your shareholders will have what's called common shares, while other people might have preferred shares, which gives them special rights and preferences. And other people might have things called convertible instruments that aren't even shares yet. Think of them like baby equity eggs that are gonna hatch into little shares at a later date. Long and short of it, the cap table keeps track of all this stuff. So you don't accidentally mess up someone's ownership percentage, which leads me to thing two, ownership amount. The cap table tracks how much of an ownership stake each of your stakeholders has, or how much they may have someday in the future. For this reason, your cap table is also an excellent planning tool for future scenarios. Third, your cap table tracks the value of everyone's shares. Or if you're in a situation where you don't know what your company's worth yet, it helps you keep track of the rules by which that value will be determined. And fourth, your cap table keeps track of how and when people can exercise their ownership rights. Or in other words, how and when they'll receive their shares and how much they'll pay for them. And finally, the cap table tracks how all those shareholders will be paid out if there's a liquidity event, meaning if the company is sold, goes public, or otherwise enables people to cash out their shares. All right, so you must be thinking, I just started the company. I don't have a lot of shareholders yet. Shouldn't I start thinking about this stuff a little later down the line? The simple answer, no. Learn from your fellow founder's experience. You want to get a handle on your cap table earlier than later. The typical wisdom is this. If you're a founder, you should create a cap table at the same time that you legally create your startup. Here's why. Legally creating means that you're filing an official document with your secretary of state called the Articles of Incorporation, if you're forming a corporation. There's a slightly different process for forming an LLC or limited liability company, but in this series, we're gonna be focusing on corporations. So the articles of incorporation, you're required to declare a pretty important piece of information, how many shares of your company you're creating. At this point, we see most companies create somewhere around 10 million shares. Depending on the state you're filing in, you may also be asked to declare what's called a par value or the nominal value of your shares. Most companies put some tiny number here when they incorporate, like 0 0.000001 cents a share. Honestly, don't worry about that right now. That's your nominal value, and it's there for lawyers like me and technical people like the IRS. What you need to care about is your valuation, which we're gonna teach you about at a later date. But for right now, let's get back to the simple, straightforward articles of incorporation. Let's say you're gonna create around 10 million shares, Typically, those first ownership shares will be split among the co-founders. So at this point, you'll have to start thinking about how to split up those shares. Like, is it 50-50? Is it 33-33-33? Or something else. You'll also have to start thinking about how you're going to distribute those shares to other people in the future, like advisors, employees, or investors. So incorporating your startup is an easy, straightforward process. But if you're doing it right, you're already starting to think about how to organize the ownership of your company, both right now and in the future. That's why a cap table is essential, even at this early point. Keeping track of it in the beginning is the best way to ensure it doesn't get away from you later, which, trust me, can lead to all kinds of problems down the road. Okay, so now for the big question. How do you create a cap table? You have a couple different options. One, you can pay a lawyer to handle it for you. Or two, you can create and manage it yourself using a spreadsheet or whatever kind of software platform you like. But whatever you do, really just make sure you keep in mind your future goals for the company. It's important to make these early decisions carefully. For example, as your company starts to grow, a self-managed spreadsheet 
probably isn't going to work for a very long time. In later lessons, we'll talk more about the problems that can result from cap table errors and failures to maintain them. And obviously, we got to do a shameless plug here. Here at Carta, we offer automated cap table management software that handles all the details from creating, organizing, and managing your cap table. And the best part? It's free while your company's still young and small. So, obviously, there's a lot to learn about cap tables. And in this video series, we're gonna dig into all of that. By the end of this course, you'll have the knowledge you need to get your company started on the right foot, avoid the compounding problems that can come from a messy cap table, and be prepared to devote your time to what you really wanna do, innovate, and grow your startup. So before we dive in, let's review what you're gonna learn in the next several lessons. First, we'll run through the various types of equity that are tracked on a cap table and why nuances are crucial for your company's success. Then we'll go a little deeper, exploring how the main components of a cap table are deeply connected and why the nuances of each piece are crucial to operating and growing your startup. After that, we'll go into more detail about fundraising and growing your team and how the cap table is a key part of that process. We'll review all the pitfalls to look out for and the ways a poorly maintained cap table can damage your chances of success. And finally, we'll arm you with the knowledge to successfully evolve your cap table over time. We'll talk about how to update it as your company raises more money, hires more employees, and grows in value. So when you're ready, click over to the next lesson and let's start learning.